Today I thought we'd look at this small DC to DC power supply, a buck regulator. It actually has a USB output built in, made by Yiko. I've done a similar video about a year back on the drop larger buck regulator. So I just thought I would show this one. It won't handle near the current or go as high a voltage as the drop, but it does have a more compact size. We can take something like a 18 volt Milwaukee or any battery for that matter, 12 volt battery, and we can turn it into an adjustable power supply. It comes with this kit. You don't have to get the kit. You can buy the board by itself and mount it however you would like. So it's based on the XL Semi XL 4015E1. You can barely read it on the board there, but it, it says CV and CC, so it does constant voltage and constant current. And I, I do like all my supplies to have that CC, especially charging uh, battery packs or cells. You can always limit your current, and you don't have to worry about you know over volting or too much charge current on your cells or your batteries. So it comes, it comes with a heat sink and all the hardware. And we'll peel off this outer cover and we'll put it together. I think it's an acrylic. And it does matter which way this cover goes because the holes are not dead center. So it has to flip the right direction. So now with it assembled, I just got some of the cheap alligator leads hooked up for testing. A quick look at the wiring diagram for it. We got 7 to 36 volts we can uh, take in and um, adjust it down to 1.25 to 32 volts out. It's Pretty wide range of adjustment there. Got our dimensions if you're interested. Some instructions here. You can pause if it's something uh, interesting there you want to look at. Then bowl right here uses the LED constant current driver module. And I've used one similar for that as well as for charging lithium ion cells and packs. And um, sometimes when a, a pack gets unbalanced, sometimes I'll use something similar like I did the drop on the larger 56 volt stuff. Sometimes I do this on the uh, 18, 20 volt pack stuff and 12 volt pack stuff. So I do uh, use it for a lot of those uh, purposes. And, and it has a, a wide range of uses really. So we can power this from a 24 volt power supply, 12 volt power supply, battery, like lead acid battery, whatever. But in this case, I'm going to use this uh, M18 adapter. I actually did a video on this about a year ago about using these for a USB adapter as well as the boards have a really easy spot to solder onto. And we can make a really nice 18, 20 volt output out of a pack very easy with this. So if we just bring over our meter. And I already got a XT60 mounted on here. We get right at our 20 volts output and we come right off the terminals when we solder this on so it doesn't matter if the usb is uh picking up you know like an auto shut off or not as long as we actually have it plugged in we're going to get our full our full battery pack voltage out so now with the xt60 leads hooked up here 
let's adjust our um, let's adjust our voltage here. Let's say we want to charge a 12 volt battery pack. And then we could actually adjust the uh, current to set up where we don't want maybe uh, more than uh, one amp output. So we can do that with the CC. So once again, I just brought over the halogen lamp. It's just a good, you know, good load for testing at low voltages. So wherever the factory left the pot setting for current is where it's at. So right now it's holding at about 1.58 amps. I wanted to point out, you see how it shows like 3.3 .3 volts out and we're not getting but about 2 volts out. It's actually not a bad reading. It's just that I'm, I'm using these really weak leads and they're actually getting warm because um, a couple amps is probably about all I need to put through these leads just for testing maybe. Maybe a little more for a small amount of time. I just wanted to show the voltage drop this actually on the leads itself. So if you actually want to monitor what's going on, you actually do have to go out into the field where the device is. But I think we're gonna see a big difference if we just bring over another meter. Even though it's about an amp and a half, it's still gonna be a, a lot of drop. So we see there we're reading a lot closer to the digital readout. 3.4. I'd say that's pretty darn close. Pretty impressed by that. So keep that in mind with your leads. I did it on purpose just to show that you can have drop in your leads if it's a um, if it's a really important application you're dealing with. You always got to check your actual voltage you get into your field device. I'm actually going to uh, just crank this current up a little bit. Let's say we want two and a half amps. It's got really really good control to it. I like that. All right, 2.46, 7.5 volts. We're only showing about 5 volts out here because this wire is uh, taking a lot more than it really wants. 2.46. Man, it is holding really, really well. But we can see here that we're holding uh, about 1.5 amps, what I said of that. It's holding really steady and the cool thing is with the with the voltage turned up a little bit and then controlling dialing back on the CC this battery is going to drain off and if you want this to stay at this level for some reason th this battery would stay through the whole depletion cycle of this battery we, we would keep the 1.5 amp until it just couldn't keep the voltage up to like 3 volts anymore which this pack wouldn't really get that far anyway but just an example of how good this can control and for a price point of about $15 delivered, I mean, it's just a handy tool to have. So I just wanted to share this little Yuko DC to DC converter and, um, and how handy it is. And uh, the Drock uh, DC to DC converter, buck converter I did, uh, it got a good many views and a lot of people liked it. So a lot of good comments and questions. So I thought I would bring this one up as well because I've actually had one for quite a while and used it a lot. So... I thought I'd order another one and uh, just show it being put together how it comes type thing and and I like having another one around anyway so it's definitely worth it. One thing I wanted to mention as well while I got this disconnected from the load and I just have it set for like 6 volts output and we do have a USB output connector. We can use it to hook up a USB cable and use that as an output cable. But just one thing to keep in mind is it actually puts out what you have the regulator set at. So here, I actually have a USB that's regulated at 5 volts here. So I wouldn't need to use this to charge, say, a cell phone or a tablet. But one thing to keep in mind, it's not a regulated output just out of there. If you turn, this, if you turn your power supply up, it's also putting that on the USB, so just keep that in mind. It's a good feature as long as you know what you're doing. That's definitely one of them lessons you don't want to learn the hard way. And with a piece of double back tape, 
we can make ourselves a really, really neat little portable variable output 5 amp power supply. But in this case, it can be a 1.25 all the way to 20 volts output almost, and current controlled and, cur and voltage controlled 5 amp output. Thought I might better show you. I do have better leads, <laughs> just in case you're wondering, just to show how the better leads do hold up. If we toggle through, set it two and a half amps, and we toggle through to showing an output. Dead on. These leads really aren't losing much. It's just two and a half amps. And the actual spring clips are a lot better connection also. And actually helps me make a little better connection here. So the voltmeter's more steady than it was in the last uh, clip of the video. So I thought I'd come back and show this because I, I did forget to put these on at the end. So we can toggle between our voltage in at 19.6 volts. Our voltage output, which we can change with this potentiometer. Our amp output. So we can actually monitor our current, adjust it accordingly, how we want it. Then our power, which uh, we're not using any at the moment, on the output side. And then we have the mode where it just goes through and cycles through them all, which is kind of neat. One more thing, I didn't even know if I mentioned it. This button can actually cut the display on and off. We can also cut the display off if we don't want it on. So if you thought this video was useful or learned anything from it today, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.